Hello and welcome back to the channel. Raquel Thomas throughout the period of 2.5 seasons not only did we learn that she was Howard's former CI, but we also witnessed her take actions like giving up Unique's record label and taking control of it again, to most recently stuffing a gun in her son's backpack. She has also made enemies on the streets, law enforcement is pursuing her, and she has severed ties with some of her a family member's speech in Spanish in the year 304 made me wonder. Given what we know about Rock, why did it go through history? The same goes for Ronnie Maddies, who has a lot of hatred for Rock. I guess the question is why what's the history between them besides being competitors and why is Ronnie the way he is? Was he always so awkward? With moves that we've seen her make as well as possible moves with DEFCON high post having Marvin move out the way to take control and having Dana taken off the chessboard because she could have been seen as being a distraction to Cannon in power and socially awkward, or did he alter while he was inside? As a result, in our breakdown, we will examine Ronnie Matthews' background and the reasons behind his current demeanor. Additionally, we will consider various hypotheses derived from available data regarding Ronnie Rock's relationship with DEFCON, including whether or not he is aware that DEFCON is not Cannon's father and what he could have done to rectify this during Cannon's third season. I'm the big dog, you don't get to be Unique's big brother, the person you avoid him because he is extremely erratic and chaotic. He oversaw the operation, which was transferred to Unique when he was acquired by Razak Cristano, who created evidence that led to his three-year prison sentence, but was he always the person we've seen in the first five episodes of season three? We can't be certain because some people change while inside, while others remain the same. Ronnie is not a sociopath, he is a psychopath. While there may be some similarities between Ronnie's traits, Ronnie is unquestionably a unique type of psychopath, he isn't just able to hide his feelings from us. Matisse is quite shallow, has a very small range of reactions, and uses strategy when he reaches up to grab an object. Fish was quite calculated in the way he questioned his brother in front of Rock, knowing that their relationship had changed since he had been inside. He was watching his brother's answer and planning to base his next move on it. His brother is very creepy, unpredictable, and, to put it mildly, reckless. He hides in the shadows when he wants to stay hidden but also comes out when he wants to be seen. Threat, and he simply creates a great deal of anxiety and discomfort in both the audience and those who are not rearing canon. Likewise emotionless he finds it awkward and others chat to him or inquire about his business, which I think is a little hypocritical given that he wasn't afraid to discuss Unique's business with Pessa or Snaps. This is the exact reason why you're socially maladjusted. The person seeking counseling in this instance is referred to as socially maladjusted, a phrase that is frequently used in the fields of sociology and psychology to characterize those who find it difficult to interact with others or adjust to acceptable social conditions. If we were to be honest, that's Mattis to a T based on what we saw in the club, when Pop hugs him and runs her hands over his body. Doesn't like people to approach him too closely, and it appears that he doesn't like people invading his space. This is likely due in part to his time spent in prison, where you do get used to having your own space and privacy. He is also constantly cleaning up after himself and organizing things, which is likely due to OCD. He also doesn't like change and basically feels that it's his way or no way now, even though the TV was turned off. Power's greatest enemy to date, but after everything is said and done, I believe that Ronnie Maddies will have raised. Canon that's a little about Ronnie Mattis from a more characteristic perspective, and this leads me to his background and relationships. He made you money back in the day snaps, so I do think he will give it a good go for that top spot, but let's wait and see what else he causes on the streets of Queens. Yes, we did give you your money back that day, you are, and everything is now working out for you. We did find out about his past, that he had a past with snaps, and that Pop Ronnie had given them a lot of money back. There was some history in this room, which I think we will learn more about in the second half, especially when we see them in a club having fun while we see Ronnie doing classic Ronnie things just standing there on the side in his own game. Back in the day, there was a business partnership that proved to be very advantageous for both Snaps and Pop, but now that they are retired, instead of being in the game themselves, they just help others finance their operations for return on their investment not actually becoming too entangled in the enjoyable but undoubtedly planning his next move h breathing, she ought to go back. 
Now, this is where we switch to the topic of Rock and the rivalry between Ronnie and Southside's own Queen Pin, who isn't participating in the game right now but is undoubtedly a maker move with Quan and Unique's heroin operation. At some point, Ronnie and Queen Pin collide in episode 303, where Ronnie tells Unique that perhaps they should have gotten rid of Rock earlier in the day after he follows up on Unique's business proposal and claims that Rock took everything they had and left him with this, even though I don't really agree with much of what Ronnie says and has done, and he's not incorrect to blame Rock when Ronnie was the game may have changed on the streets with the shooting of Howard and the involvement of the Italian Mafia, but much of it was a setback. Inside, Uni took over the operation, but Rock was the reason behind its demise. She had tipped off Detective Howard, which caused him to lose his plug-in Dean. She then set him up for shooting Howard, where he had a brief stint in jail. When he was released, he found himself without a crew, without organization, and without a plug. Ronnie was correct to point the finger at Rock because of the cascading effect of Rock's really bad actions. When it came to Rock figuring out how to wash all this money I got left over just collecting dust in a storage unit, Unique did start to show a bit of his vulnerable and loving side. There was this pillow discuss where Rock revealed that she has cash stashed away in a storage unit, and if this had been seasons 1 and 2, we know the move that Unique would have made. I'm sure if you look at the bigger picture, Unique would have thought that he lost. Informed Ronnie of this information as well, he would have taken a very similar action, but we can never be certain. There's not much to go on in terms of his backstory just yet, but I do feel in the second half we will learn a bit more, especially with the unique out the way his hatred for Rock seems to run deep, like he really hates her to the call. And that brings me to the backstory of these characters prior to running inside prison. Death makes it possible for the plot to change and concentrate more on Ronnie, so I do believe there will be a Defcon who was reportedly in charge at the time, and he was, let's not forget, gay. With that said, we know that Rock was a CI back in the day, working undercover for Detective Howard. The question I have is, where we get to the theory element, did Ronnie know that Defcon was gay well does that mean he knows that Defcon can't be as gay as he seems? Could Cannon's father start tarnishing Rock's name in the streets just by chatting or by learning that Cannon's father is a police officer because, let's not forget, he isn't exactly shy about discussing other people's business. I came up with a theory about how Ronnie could poison Cannon's mind by disclosing Rock's past, but reputation is also important in the street game. One of the 48 laws of power's tenets is to guard your reputation with your life. Rock concealed the fact that Howard is Cannon's father because she knew the streets would kill him for being a police officer's son, and I assume she was acting to keep herself safe as well. Reputation, it would have also made it clear that Rock was having an affair with a police officer and that she was now wearing a Target shirt. Defcon used to pay Rock to maintain appearances as his girl because he didn't want his sexuality to be known because it wasn't socially acceptable in the past. However, if Ronnie and Cannon start talking about the past, Ronnie might pick up some knowledge and quickly start spreading rumors about Rock on the streets, seriously harming his reputation once more. Occasionally it's not about taking territory or hitting your opponent in the head. Like this in public would cause Rock to completely lose credibility and her reputation to completely collapse. It's also the same in the business world, just look at what's happened to certain big names and companies recently, your reputation could go in an instant, and that could have serious repercussions for Rock. It could lead to problems with the Italian mafia, strain her relationship with her family because it would raise more concerns. On January 12, 2024, Power Book 3, Raising Canon Season 3 Episode 6 will be available. Thanks for watching.